ओल्ड मैन एंड द सी रिटन बाई अर्नेस्ट हेमिंग वे प्रजेंटेड टू यू बाई डॉक्टर विनम्रता हेलो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ नॉवेल और वी कैन सी अ नॉवेला बिकॉज इट इज़ अ वेरी शॉर्ट नॉवेल रिटन बाई अर्नेस्ट हेमिंग वे हेमिंग वे वॉज एन अमेरिकन राइटर and his profound words of wisdom collected in his novels and short stories are deep philosophical and have got a very philosophical inclination and broodings about metaphysical world so basically this particular novel that we are talking about today is one of his chief and highly acclaimed critically very appreciated novel so before moving into this particular novel and its story and theme let's first have a brief look into who ernest hemingway was about the author ernest miller hemingway july 21st 1899 to july 2nd 1961 he was an american journalist novelist short story writer and sportsman He has bagged Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1953 and has also won the Nobel Prize in literature in 1954. He has published seven novels, six short story collections, and two non-fictional works. Three of his novels, four short story collections, and three non-fiction works were published posthumously. Many of his works are considered classics of American literature and one such text is Old Man and the Sea that we are going to discuss today. Hemingway called his style the iceberg theory. You know when we talk about an iceberg only 1% of the iceberg you can see the rest is submerged in the sea the rest is not visible. So that was the theory which he implied for his writings. he used to say only a few words and was not very uh, vocal about expressing all the emotions through writing some of the emotions were subdued submerged within the sea the reader had to read it to interpret it between the lines um, between the words that he is inscribing so just like the iceberg which floats above water and the supporting structure and symbolism operate out of sight it is not visible in the same way the concept of the iceberg theory was also referred to as the theory of omission omission why because he mentioned only specific things the rest things you have to read between the lines rest things were not written down there the emotions was not reflected through writings but the reader had to interpret it in his or her own way so hemingway's intent was to portray emotions in a very scientific way that was the critical bent of mind of hemingway and that was we can say uh, the critical field which was being now laid down by writers like eliot and richards who were talking about practical criticism who were talking about reader response theory or uh, eliot when he talks about objective correlative such theories now are coming into the play in the works of ernest miller hemingway so his use of an image is just like an objective correlative which was the characteristic of of course ezra pound t s eliot james joyce and frost now moving on to this text when talking about this text this is a short novel or novella already mentioned written by ernest hemingway and it was published in 1952 and just after its publication in 1953 he was awarded the pulitzer prize for fiction this is considered his last major work of fiction and the story's protagonist is an old man and his struggles against all the odds to catch a giant fish although this whole story is also very symbolic because a fisherman's job is to catch a fish that is his daily routine there may be a number of odds coming into his way while catching the fish but he never leaves his goal till the end even he is defeated several times but he never leaves hope so we can say that that is the theory of karma that is the theory of your hard work 
you have to go on following your dreams you have to go on accomplishing day to day steps you have to go on uh, working hard for your dreams whether you fail whether you achieve it that is another story fruit is not important your work is important so you aim for the fruit of course but even if you are not getting the fruit you are not disheartened you keep on working for that so you uh, in hindi we can say that karm kiye ja phal ki chinta mat kara insaan you have to just keep on working hard that is the theory of karma so somewhere or the other we can relate it to the indian philosophy now coming to the synopsis of the story the story is about the struggle of an old fisherman and the greatest catch of his life santiago who is the protagonist of the novel is an aged cuban fisherman and he is very unlucky as as he is unable to catch any fish for actually 84 days for 84 days 84 long days he goes on hunting for fishes to the sea and he is unable to catch not a single fish now when we are talking about this thing that this is a cuban fisherman story we have to not forget this point that hemingway himself had spent lot of time in cuba working as a journalist there and uh, this particular story is also taken from one of the cuban fisherman now the parents of uh, the young apprentice which this man has santiago has a young apprentice named manolin and uh, Manolin has uh, Manolin is actually very attached to Santiago but he is forced to leave the old man in order to find some another prosperous boat where he can find more fishers where, where he can find more gain his parents force Manolin's parents force him to leave Santiago thinking that Santiago is unlucky because it's generally not possible that a fisherman goes on for fishing and for long 84 days he never gets any fish so nevertheless the boy continues to take care of the old man and upon his return after every night after the expedition he goes back to the old man and helps him tote his gear and his ransackle and he secures food for him and discusses the latest development of the american baseball because baseball is a favorite game of santiago so they both keep on discussing baseball So now what Santiago does that on the 85th day he gets away into the sea and luckily catches a marlin. Marlin is a fish a uh, species of fish and Santiago recognizes that okay this is a marlin that he has caught but the marlin is huge enough and he cannot pull it up. The old man expertly hooks the fish but cannot pull it in. instead the fish begins to pull away the boat the fish pulls the boat all through the day through the night through another day and through another night and for this keeps on continuing till the third day on the third day the fish tires but till now santiago is also tired because every time he is pulling the fish towards him and the fish is running away so there is a kind of tugging and his hands are wounded Uh, by doing so by the constant pulling and seeing the hand is hurt and the sleep deprived santiago somehow manages to pull the fish and kill it finally but after killing the fish what happens the fish is the largest fish he has ever seen he is happy and excited and as santiago sails on with the fish the marlin's blood trail is left behind which attracts sharks and not one shark or two shark sharks after sharks keeps on coming following the trail of the blood and he tries to defend his prize he tries to defend the fish but the fights um, the fight continues and the shark somehow eat away the fish and only what is left is the skeleton of the fish now santiago is very tired he arrives home before day breaks stumbles back to his shack and sleeps very deeply The next morning a crowd of amazed fishermen gather around the skeletal carcass of the fish which is still lashed to the boat knowing nothing of the old man's struggle tourists at a nearby cafe observe the remains of the giant marlin and mistake it for a shark Manolin who has been worried sick over the old man's absence is moved to tears when he finds Santiago safe 
So till now no one is concerned about Santiago whether he is safe or not. Only one boy, the apprentice, is caring about Santiago. He comes, he fetches the old man some coffee and his daily papers and also brings the baseball scores and watches him sleep. When the old man wakes up, the two agree to this fact that they will become partners once more. The old man returns to sleep and dreams his usual dream of lions at play on the beaches of Africa. So that was the occurring dream that he used to have uh, repeatedly. So that was the dream and again that dream comes him and he sleeps uh, uh, to that dream. So that is all about the story. Uh, Actually, there is nothing of an amazing element about the story when you will read the story. But yes, when you will re uh, when you will read the synopsis actually. But yes, when you will read the story, you will see the tension which is created. The every time you will feel your heartbeat throbbing about what is going to happen next. The struggle of the old man and the fish and this, uh, to pull, pull the fish, to cast the fish and then finally the struggle of the old man with the sharks. It will move you to your core. So that is all about the synopsis of the story. Now the theme. The basic theme is it is about a chronicle of a man's struggle against defeat and battle against the natural world and the story of man's place within nature because nature is the supreme. So, although people think that they can tame nature and they actually try to do so, but nature plays its own course. Both Santiago and the Marlin display the qualities of pride, honor and bravery. They both struggle. Santiago for his life to secure food, to secure fish so that he can sell away and gain money and Marlin for its own pride and honor and to save its life. And both are subject to the same eternal law of nature. They must be killed or be killed. Either, you know, the nat what is nature? Nature is a food chain. One is the prey, the other one is the predator. So, that is the basic theme about the novel. It is a, a very deep touching story about how nature is at play in everything around you and uh, although it is a very small uh, point a fisherman catching trying to catch a fish and in our daily life we can miss the fact but when you think deeply it has got such philosophical meaning so that is the story and then I would like to sh uh, show you some quotes from Hemingway actually in Hemingway's philosophy death is inevitable and why Hemingway's philosophy? This is the philosophy of life actually. Death is inevitable. It will come. It has to come. It may come early. It may come later. But yes, only one thing is definite that it will come. No man is eternal. No man is immortal. So be it a man or an animal, never succumb and get defeated. So till the last breath of your life, because death is inevitable, but till the last breath of your life, you have to keep on struggling. Quoting Hemingway, man is not made for defeat, man can be destroyed but not defeated. So uh, uh, if you gain your uh, ultimate um, aim or not, what is your ultimate aim, whether you gain it or not, you must keep fighting for it, you must keep working for it, you must not feel demotivated. For 84 days we can see Santiago kept on working and on the 85th day he fought and he got the prize but ultimately failed to bring it to the shore. So still he is not defeated. He thinks that next day again he will uh, rise up and go to fishing with uh, his apprentice. So you can see that one must never be defeated. That is the spirit of that old man. So that spirit must always be kept high. That is all about this story and I am sure you must have understood it. If yes, then please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. Thank you.